Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out Mission to Mars 2049. This game supports 2-4 to four players, it's for ages 9 and up, and the average playtime is 45 to 90 minutes. So what is Mission to Mars 2049? Well basically it's a race to the North Pole of Mars. The first player to get here and build an H2O station will win the game. I'll explain more about that later. As far as your components, you've got one board. Okay, you can see that each player starts along the outside of the board and they're trying to make their way to the North Pole. You've got some cards up here. Uh, think of these as development cards like in Settlers of Catan. In fact, this game is very similar to Settlers of Catan, but it has a few twists to make things interesting. These are attack cards and these are peaceful cards. The peaceful cards help you develop. The attack cards sort of screw over other players. There's road cards here. Each player has to build a road that leads to the North Pole in order to build the H2O station here. And that's the only time we'll use these road cards. You've got uh, three resources in the game, air, food, and minerals. And uh, players will be collecting these so that they can buy these structures over here to help them reach the North Pole. Uh, then you've got these tokens of the same type, and basically players can trade in these cards for these tokens. And there's two reasons why you'd want to do that. Uh, one obvious reason is to put cards back into the supply so that you can get more cards. The other reason is there are ways to steal cards from other players, uh, but your tokens are considered safe, so you cannot steal tokens from other players. So by trading in these for these, you're sort of safeguarding your resources. There's also a die in the game. And sort of like in Settlers of Catan, if you roll a resource of a particular type, then all players in the game will get that resource, depending on how many tokens they have. Sorry for the glare. Depending on how many uh, tokens they have on the board of that type. But again, they have to buy them first. There's also some other ones, like this gem here, will allow you, uh, the active player only, to collect a resource of their choice from the, uh, the resource card of their choice from the supply there. They can also get a road card if they want to. This X means their turn is skipped and this robber means that uh, you can steal a resource card from another player. Not, another, not a token, mind you, but just a card. So there's other things over here, obviously. <laughs> um, I didn't put things in their baggies yet. I'm still in the process of doing that. But each player has their own set of tokens. You've got bases, you've got uh, like air stations, you've got food station, mineral stations, um, and those correspond to the three different resource types in the game. You've got laboratories here. First, you put the three on the board. On your turn, you can trade resources to the bank. You can't trade with other players, but you can trade to the bank. And the default uh, is four to one, just like in Settlers of Catan. But if you have a three on the board, then you can trade to the bank three to one. Then you can put a two down, which allows you to trade two to one to the bank. So again, very similar to Settlers. That way, you cannot trade with other players, like I said. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, yeah, there's these player guides here on the back of this. This shows you how to set up the game. I guess we'll jump into that real quick. Um, each player receives a set of their own building tokens of their color. And then they start with two of each resource type. And then they start out uh, their first base and one resource station of each type around it. So something like this. Now, again, just for, just for example purposes, I didn't bother setting up the other player. But whenever you set up the other players, you want to try and start as far away as you can from each other. So in a two-player game, this player would be down here. And then the second player would be up here. Okay, so and again, each player receives uh, two resources of each type. Uh, there is a back, so players can't see what you have. Okay, so um, how is this game played? Well, on your turn, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to roll this die here. And if a resource comes up, then every player receives a resource of that type, depending on how many structures they have um, next to their bases. So the more you have of that resource type, the more structures you get, sort of like in Settlers of Catan. Um, if you roll a gem, like I said, you get to take... Uh, the active player only takes one of those resources you can take from other players with the thief, and then the X skips your turn. Um, if you happen to get your turn skipped twice, you can take a resource of your choice from here, but your turn is still skipped. Okay, so what can you do on your turn? Well, let's go ahead and consult the manual because I don't have a photographic memory. You can trade resources to the bank. Like I said, there is a default uh, trade of four to one. Uh, but like I said, you can build laboratories at some point during the game to uh, lessen how much uh, that ratio is. So instead of having to trade four food for one air or four food for one mineral, if you have a three on the board, then you could trade three food in for one air. You know, and you get, you get the idea. You can change resource cards for resource tokens. So if you have three minerals cards, then you can trade that in for three mineral token or one mineral token of this three here. Or if you have, uh, if you happen to have like eight mineral cards, you can trade that in for this eight mineral token here. And again, you're going to do that to safeguard your resources because players cannot steal these. They can only steal these. 
You can also pay for and build bases, resource stations, and laboratories. There's no limit to how many structures you can build during a turn. Build as many as you can afford. And basically, you're going to use your resources as you collect them during the game to uh, buy these various things. On the back of your setup guide is a purchase guide here. And you can see the different building costs, the air station, food station, mineral station, and bases. And again, you're going to be putting these down to make your way toward the North Pole of Mars. You can also build laboratories, peaceful mission cards, aggressive mission cards, uh, road to the H2O station, and finally the H2O station to win the game. And you can see the resource costs associated with that for each of those structures. So just to give you an example, um, you can put down uh, that and then players may do something like this. Whenever you build a base you can put it diagonally to another base. Uh, these resource stations on the other hand have to be put directly next to a base or adjacent to it. Um, and then so maybe something like this, and then, I don't know, something like this. And so maybe you don't even want to build all these resource buildings, because that does require a lot of uh, resources. So maybe you just want to build bases, which is fine. Once you get to this point, as long as you have five, at least five bases, you can then pay for a road to connect here, and then you can pay for the H2O station, and that's how you win the game. Players are going to be starting from here, building structures, moving up, but the more resources they put down of a particular type, the more resources they earn whenever that resource comes up here on the die. And again, you can use the laboratory, uh, the, the two laboratories here, these two laboratory tokens. You build the three first. At some point, you'll build the two, too, if you want. That way, you can trade your resources to the bank for cheaper. And that's uh, basically what this game is all about. Um, you can also buy one card and trade one, or, and then play one mission card. So you can buy one and then play one. If you happen to have more than one, uh, you can only play one. So uh, just keep that in the back of your mind. And that's basically how the game works. Play, uh, players will continue taking turns until someone reaches the North Pole. And the first player to do that will win the game. All right, so there you have it, a quick look at Mission to Mars 2049. I didn't cover all of the rules found in the manual, but hopefully this gives you the general idea. As far as what I thought, I think uh, the production values are great, like the colors and the uh, the, the sharpness and the contrasts and, and just everything about this game looks great. So I'm really happy about that. Um, as far as the manual goes, it's very clear. Um, I mean, granted, it does look a little long, uh, but there is a story, there's um, an explanation as to each of, the res uh, each of the components in the game, how to play, there's an FAQ in the back, there's an explanation as to what each of the cards do that are found in these two decks over here, recommendations and tactics, um, I already mentioned the FAQ, there's a did you know section so you can learn some scientific facts that you may not have known before. So I mean the manual, the board, the components, everything looks great. I like the fact that each player has their own set of tokens and they're color coded on the back. And they're even color-coded on the front, too. You can see a little orange star here for this orange player. And there's a little... Oh, that's a base. Okay, this one here is a little purple star for this uh, research station there. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty cool. And there's even these gray ones. These are reserved uh, tokens. So if you happen to lose one of a particular color, you can replace it with these. So the game comes with extra components should you happen to lose a particular resource, which is really cool. Um, I like the fact that there are laboratories. Um, you can't trade with other players, like I said earlier, but you can put laboratories laboratories down on the board to help you trade to the bank if you foresee yourself doing a lot of trading. And there's different strategies on how to get to the center of the board. You may opt to simply put bases down and basically rush toward the center of the board so that you can get uh, a road and then build the H2O station. But to do that, you're going to have to be awfully lucky and it's going to take a lot of time because you can see um, building a base just by itself costs three of each resource and the uh, H2O station requires eight of re each resource. And at the beginning of the game, you only have one of each. So you're only get one. Re you're only going to get one resource at a time whenever they're rolled on the die. So at some point, you're going to need more resource buildings. But the question is, how many do you put down? Do you put down a lot? Do you put down just enough? You know, that, that, that's where the strategy comes into play. How do you put them down? Um, it's very possible to block yourself in. Uh, for example, let's say I have something like this over here. Let's say I do something like that, okay? And I want to put another base down. Well, I've hemmed myself in here. Um, I, I might have a lot of resources, but um, now I can't move forward toward the North Pole. I'm going to have to build off of this one diagonally like so, and then work my way up this way, and then when I get another base on this ring, I could put the road, say, over here or something like that. And then I could build my H2O station. 
So there's a different strategies on how you lay things out whenever you're putting these tokens down. There's a strategy and what resources you go for, whether or not you build these laboratories to help you trade with the bank. Strategy and what kind of cards you take, if should you want to buy any. So uh, like in Settlers of you have a few options as to what you want to buy. I do like that there are tokens uh, to replace these cards because, again, you can steal cards from other players, but these tokens will help you preserve your resources uh, for the players that love to draw from this aggression deck. Um, in case I didn't mention it, you know, th there is a few things in this deck that will definitely screw over the leader, so you want to be careful about drawing too many of these cards. Um, the manual very well laid out. Um, it has everything in it that you can possibly think of. Um, it, ha it has an explanation of all of the components. It has how buildings work, uh, recommendations and tactics, a quick overview of every card that you might find in these two decks up here. You've got an FAQ and even uh, little facts about the game. So, um, do I recommend this game? Yes, but only to people that can afford it. Um, even even for those that have Settlers of Catan already, I would recommend this game because, again, it does a few things that uh, set it apart from Settlers of Catan. The price is between 40 and 50 bucks on the official website, and to me that's a little pricey, but um, I can sort of understand that because the components, again, are fantastic. Um, it's very easy to play and jump into. Uh, it's family friendly and it has a sci-fi theme. So all of those things um, appeal to me. And I probably would pay 40 to 50 bucks even though I'm the kind of guy who's a penny pincher. I don't like spending too much on games, but I probably would pick this up anyway just because I enjoy Settlers of Catan and I enjoy sci-fi themed games. Um, so do I recommend this one? Yes but only if you have the money to do so and you like sci-fi themed games and you're looking and you really like Settlers of Catan and want sort of like a variation of it. So with that being said, if you guys want to check out my full written review, you can www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you can keep up to date with any new content I've been to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.